The mathematics of quantum physics, despite of its complicated and complex nature, do have a lot of impact in our daily life, which, although seems to be invisible, is definitely visible. Among the many powers of quantum mechanics lies multiple quantum states. What is that? How it changes our perspective of looking into the physics at the quantum level? In this video, we are going to look into that as well as explore some of the most powerful computational technique which the mathematics of quantum physics offers. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to the 17th level on the series of videos on the mathematics of quantum physics. First of all, when we are doing with the mathematics part, we do need to understand that why do we at all need the mathematics. Now, as you can see right on the screen that the mathematics of quantum physics is notoriously complex, filled with abstract concepts, wave functions, superposition, entanglement and a lot. Now, these ideas are expressed through dense symbolic notation that often defies intuition and requires a deep understanding of linear algebra, differential equations, probability theory and so on. The equations describe behaviors that challenge our everyday experience and the challenge is that why do you need the mathematics, what practical purpose it serves and most importantly, is it at all worth doing this? Now in order to know that, first of all, what we need to understand that quantum mechanics has driven a significant technological innovation which leads to new industries and economic growth. Among them, the first is that from the very big whatever it be a computer etc from the very big we turn into smaller smaller and further smaller so from here we can say that the uh, the the entire revolution from a very big uh, computer mobile any other technology we are turning down to very small small and this has helped with computer uh, with quantum physics so uh, what we can say is that the ongoing development of technological innovation of quantum technologies actually promised to create a new markets and job opportunities in various areas. The understanding of the universe, the fundamental understanding of the universe which leads to new theories and insights in physics, chemistry and beyond has totally changed. This deeper understanding has actually helps drive the further scientific uh, discoveries and innovations that benefits society. We have also seen that encryption underpins the algorithm used in modern encryption, securing online transaction, communications and data storage. Fiber optic, the principles of quantum mechanics are used to understand and improve the transmission of light through optical fibers which forms the backbone of the internet and telecommunication networks. Solar panels, understanding quantum states and electrons behavior in materials has led us to design more efficient solar panels making renewable energy more accessible and reducing reliance and fossil fuels. Further to that, what we can see that the battery technology, this has also been one of the most important part that it actually is coming from quantum physics. So this is to show you that how big and how uh, revolutionized it has in terms of the under understanding. As you can see, this huge computer has now into a laptop and it's further coming uh, smaller. So the development of semiconductor has been a very important revolution. The behavior of electrons in those materials including concepts like energy bands, conduction, valency bonds have changed. Transistors, the basic building block of all modern electronic device is a direct application of quantum mechanics. And this has led to what is called miniaturization. That means that transistors and the creation of integrated circuits been driven by quantum mechanics. So as transistors become smaller and smaller, quantum effects become more pronounced. Flash memories that the SSDs uh, used in solid state drives are relying on quantum physics and cryptography which is very, very important in terms of the principles of uh, securing data transmission is uh, uh, being ruled by quantum mechanics. So from here, what we can say that all of these are actually determined by mathematics. So unknowingly, you are doing or we are doing the mathematics, but somehow unknowingly. We do not have a direct implication and we do not know. Now, in order to make, a, uh, I would say, a, a specific understanding of the math mathematics, not doing it unknowingly, rather doing it very knowingly, we will move into the next part of our video, where I would just like to explain you something very important. 
Now this sign that you see in uh, on your screen is very powerful. So what I can tell from here that typically I would say that the entire quantum mechanics a system is described by a quantum state which is this one typically described by a wave function which can be described as this uh, or a state vector like this which is a, I would say a complex uh, space uh, known as the Hilbert space these things we have already will already know. Now one of the fundamental principles in quantum mechanics is the superposition principle. What does it state? It says that if a system can be in the state of psi1 and psi2, it can also be a linear combination of these two states which is this one. And your c1 and c2 I would say are complex numbers that describe the probability amplitude of the system bringing into state psi1 and psi2. So this is superposition. Now how this superposition becomes so powerful? Now in quantum computing the fundamental unit of information is basically called a qubit. And this qubit can exist in a superposition of the basis of states, state 0 and state 1. And this can be written as this where alpha and beta are complex numbers. Uh, and in this can further be written as this one. These are the com uh, probability amplitudes and we can write it as this one uh, that is taking the modulus alpha square plus beta square equals to 1. And this superposition, this one actually allows quantum computers to process multiple posi possible simultaneously. I would say processes and this is uh, vastly increases the computational power to certain problems. So the, here what we are doing is that we are measuring the probabilities of the qubits that are being measured. Now let us say a qubit is in a following state, this one. Now in this case we can say that alpha equals to 1 upon square root 2 and beta equal to 1 upon square root of 2 and the probabilities would be the square which we take into half. Now this is mathematics but what does it mean in simple language? It means that the uh, the qubit has an equal probability 50% 50% to state in 0 and 1 and this can be exploited in what is called is a multiple quantum state and we will look into that what is the advantage of using this multiple quantum state so the advantage of using the multiple quantum state is in a kind of a uh, thing which is called quantum parallelism and I'm going to explain very short and briefly on that because this would again take a lot of videos to explain on what is called quantum parallelism. So in quantum parallelism what happens is that in a classical bit can be in a, a two states that is 0 to 1 to represent multiple state you need actually uh, what is called multiple bits and a single qubit can represent both states simultaneously due to superposition which we have just seen. And this allows the quantum computers to perform at a supernormal space. So for instance in a quantum computer with n qubits uh, the system can exist into 2 to the power n different states. That means that a quantum computer can process up to 2 to the power n possible inputs simultaneously providing a massive computational advantage for certain tasks factoring up to large numbers and this one which you can just see if you have got 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so on. So it would compute. So here a quantum computer could in principle process all the 7, 8 whatever be the uh, position simultaneously whereas a classical computer would need to evaluate the each of the state one by one. So here you can see what is called quantum parallelism. So parallelly the quantum computer is executing the task and this is going, going to change a profound change in terms of the industry, in terms of the mathematics and the calculations that we do. Huge complex helix structure, protein structure are now being evaluated on quantum computer. So just to tell in short, so you see that again, I, I, as I was telling right at the beginning of the video that mathematics is around everywhere. I'm going to show you further example how these simple equations can lead to, uh, you know, great advantages. So in quantum computing, actually we are using the entanglement. So 2 to the power n, 2 to the power 10, which can give into 1, 0, t, 4, 2, 4 amplitudes. And now this is one of the, uh, you know, very good, uh, I would say, research paper on what is quantum parallelism. I put up the description in the uh, link in the description. You can go ahead and watch it. And this will give you an idea of what is quantum parallelism and how superpositions are being used on that. 
Now, speaking on that brings us to the next part of the topic, which is called multiple quantum states. And I'm going to tell you what is multiple quantum state and what, what are the implications of that. Now, as you see that we have a postulate and the postulate tells about is this. The Hilbert space of a composite system is given by a tensor product of the separate individual Hilbert spaces. And I'm going to take this single postulate. I'm going to show you with very simple mathematical equations. What do I mean by this? Because this is just a postulate. Now, when dealing with a composite system, I can say, tell you that a system, uh, I would say quantum system is made up of two subsystems, like I would say a two particles and the overall systems, Hilbert space is constructed from the Hilbert space of the individual subsystem. That means two subsystems adding up to the overall Hilbert uh, space that is the total subsystem. So a uh, Hilbert space is denoted by this symbol H which is a kind of a curly and what we know that each vector represents a possible state of the system and the inner product of the space gives the probabilities associated with different measurement outcomes that is what it comes. So this is actually being done by a tensor product. We, I will show you what it is that. So for example, if we have two quantum state subsystem A, which is in Hilbert space A and subsystem B, Hilbert space B, then the Hilbert space of the composite HAB will be given by this. And this, pro this sign is basically called the tensor product. Obviously, <laughs> you might now have a question that what is a tensor product? I will make a separate video because it is again a very uh, extensive topic. But I can tell you in simple language that a tensor product is basically a mathematical operation that combines two or more vectors or matrices and spaces into larger objects or generalizes into a larger object that uh, represents all possible combinations. Let me show a simple example. If this one is a, in a one two dimensional space and this is another two dimensional space, so the tensor product of V1 and V2 will be 2 multiplied by 2. It will give up to this, this one, the 4. Simple. This is what is called tensor product, although tensor product has immense other, uh, I would say, manifestations as well as, uh, I would say, uh, implications. We'll come to that later. So this would give a four-dimensional vector space. So ultimately, we can say that the tensor product, what it is doing, it is combining elements and creating a new vector space. This operation is crucial in quantum mechanics, as we will see, for describing composite quantum systems and the tensor product of the individual subsystem space. This is very important. So what we see is that the tensor product combines the state of the individual subsystem. Let me give you an example. Now quantum mechanically we can say this is in, sub, in a state of H A Hilbert space. This is in B and then the combined state would give result into this and the combined state of a vector in the composite Hilbert space is H A B. Now, I will give you a, now this from moving from Hilbert space, let me give you an example of the qubit. The Hilbert space for each qubit, for example, has a HA, HB, which is equal to the complex, uh, this one, C2, in a com into, into a dimensional complex space. So the composite system, both qubits together, I mean to say, of a Hilbert space HAB will give into this C4, which is actually nothing, I'm so sorry, which is nothing but a four-dimensional complex space. So we see that the tensor product actually combines that. How do we combine that? Then what we do is that we take a single qubit space, a Hilbert space A and B, and then it results into this. It's pretty simple. Now, say for example, if we take, if the first qubit, now I'm taking a qubit example to demonstrate. If the first qubit is in state 0, and the second qubit is in uh, state 1, the state of the composite system is denoted by this. Now, you might say, then, what is the significance of doing this? Now, the significance is that the tensor product actually allows for the description of entangled states. This is very important because this is the what you can see the above equation is an entangled system. So these are the states in the composite system that can be factored and how it is done. So, for example, this one, this, this, this state, this is a valid state. In HAB, that means Hilbert space with a combined composite system of A and B. But remember, this cannot be written as a simple product of H A and H B. This is important. Let me go back once more to the earlier part of the video. So this can be combined, H A and can H A H B can be combined into H A B. But if I take the qubits, that means quantum mechanically, if I'm making a superposition of this, 
then uh, I cannot write it as a, a product, simple product set of H and HB. And the very important question that you have in your mind, I'm going to answer that why it is so. Now, in order to answer why it is so, I will take again a very simple mathematical example, and this is called a product state. Now, a product state, let me tell you what it is. It is, uh, is a state of composite system that can be written in a direct product, that is a tensor product of the system. Now, say for example, if we have a system A, which is in psi A, psi sub A, I'm not mentioning the bra and the cat vector, and B is in psi B, then the state combined together can be written as this. Right, and this is actually what we, we call is the combination. Now, an entangled state. Now, consider the following state of the two qubits. This one, right? So, this is what this is an entangled state. That means an entangled state is a state of the composite system. And remember, it cannot be written as a product of states individually. Instead, the state of the system as a whole, as a whole, corresponds or correlates between the subsystems that cannot be separated so this cannot be separated so in order to know that i will give you a further example to try to understand that let us say that this 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 uh, quantum state for example i'm going in the opposite direction that is by contradiction i want to prove that let us suppose that it can be written as this now if this can be written as this if we expand this equation then this equation we get uh, like this I'm expanding, just opening this, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, all these states, right? So what we need, now if, 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 if I now try to compare this with the original entangled state, which I have just seen, what we need are few conditions. One is that we need AC equal to 1 square root of 2, which is a coefficient of 0, 0. We need AD equals to 0, which is a coefficient of 0, 1. We need BC is equal to, equals to 0, which is coefficient of 0, 1, right? Uh, this should be 1, 0, I am so sorry. And this is written as coefficient of 1, 1. So the third one would be 1, 0. I am so sorry for that. Now, if this be required, and if AD equals to 0 and BC equals to 0, and either A equals to 0, you can put the values of D equal to 0, or either B equals to 0 and C is equals to, equals to 0, then any of, the, of these products cannot, right? But any of these are zero, the product cannot simultaneously satisfy the requirements. That means AC equals to zero and BD equals to square root of two, it cannot happen. That means there is a contradiction and it actually proves that it cannot be written as two different quantum states or two different products. So from here, what we can draw a kind of a conclusion. The conclusion is that this cannot be written as a product form of this. So, the contradiction which we have just seen actually shows that this one cannot be written in the form of this. Why it is? Because this part, which I have just shown, uh, let me show you again. This one is an entangled state and the correlation between the qubits are such that the state of the system cannot be separated into independent states such as A, B and so on. And this inseparability is what makes entangled states unique in quantum mechanics and we exploit this power in order to create quantum uh, quantum computers right so from here what we can see is that this postulate or this statement is more or less clear that the hilbert state definitely is a composite system of a tensor product and this cannot be individually put up of the separate individual hilbert spaces now, this actually brings us to another important part of our video today is that it also talks about dimensions of composite quantum system. Now, what do we mean by dimensions? Now, in general, in quantum mechanics, the study of quantum system is essential for understanding the multiple quantum, uh, I would say, entities which interact and combine to form complex states. So, when dealing with systems composed of one or more quantum particles, such as qubits, as we have seen in quantum coupling, the overall state of the system cannot simply be described as individual states of the component. Instead, the system as a whole represents a higher dimensional space that capture all possible configurations. So, the overall state of the system cannot be simply described. So from here, what we see that each qubit of, uh, so for example, two qubits actually will equal to four dimension. How is it that? So each qubit has actually two dimensions, uh, two, two, I would say two dimensional quantum system with zero and one. 
Now, when we consider a system is made up of two qubits, we need to look at the point of both the qubits. So, when we combine 0 and 1, that means we are combining the qubits each of a of the possible state. So, it will combine 2 multiplied by 2. So, it is an entangled state. 1 went 2, 2 multiplied by 2, it gives 4. So, 4 possible states. So, the composite semit is described by 4 dimensional Hilbert space. And now, now we are going to look into that. Simple mathematically, what we can see is that this one can be written uh, corresponds to both qubit 1 and 2, right? And 2 being the state in 0. 0, 1 again will be corresponding to both qubit uh, in uh, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, this time I have written it right. <laughs> Uh, this one would be corresponding to qubit being into state 1 and state uh, and uh, qubit 2 in, in, into 0 and finally 1 1 thank I have written it correctly in both qubit state this and this so what we can see is that this system what we have written in English can we write a little bit more elegantly obviously we can write that and this is how we write now don't worry about those subscripts I can tell you that 0 2 and 0 1 sorry first of all we come to this 4 4 4 this represents the states of the composite system in a four dimensional Hilbert space these are the vectors and again this 0 2 0 2 and uh, all those things represents the individual qubit states in a two dimensional Hilbert space I have written it vectors so from here what we can see is that we know Earlier we have seen that the state of individual quantum system can be described by unit vectors and this is how we can say that this can be written 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So what does it ultimately tell? In simple language it tells that each of these two qubit states is represented as a four dimensional column vector. Second is that these vectors form the standard basis for the four dimensional Hilbert space representing two qubit system and these metric representations are fundamental in quantum computing and quantum mechanics where operations are generally described by vectors and matrices. So this completes our understanding of dimensions and how these dimensions from 2 moves to 4 and this becomes extremely important because if you are doing physics with dimension this would be coming very very important. Now this composite quantum system as we know the quantum system itself comes with probability. So this quantum system also comes with something which is called a, a probability. And we are going to look into this part of the video. What do we mean by composite system and probability? Now you see that quantum system we have seen it exists in superpositions. So since quantum systems actually cannot predict the actual outcome it only says the likelihood isn't it of particles. So, till now what we have seen, we have seen in composite co quantum system the state of the entire system is represented by a tensor product. The probabilities associated with the measurement outcomes for the composite system cannot be determined by simply looking at the system obviously because they are entangled and this probability allows physicists to make predictions about the behavior of the quantum system and in quantum key distribution the uh, protocol is based on the probabilistic nature of the quantum system. Say for example, I will show you now the qubits for example 1 is in uh, for example in, a, in, in the state of 1 and qubit 2 is in, a, in the system uh, qubit 2. So I can say that a system of two qubits where qubit was in, in uh, psi 1 and qubit 2 is in psi 2. The joint state of the system is denoted uh, as this obviously by a tensor product. Now, uh, for example, th this combined state exists in a four-dimensional Hilbert space. Now, suppose we measure a qubit in state 1 as this one and we measure the second one as in psi 2. Then, according to the joint thing, we can write this as this one. And if we know that Born's rules tells us that the probability P phi of measuring the state phi can be squared and from there we can get it the squaring that is by the modulus of the inner product and the joint state from there we can get into this one. This is assumed by squaring. I am following the steps. Now if I expand the inner product substituting the joint states of the inner product we get this one we are just substituting. So phi and psi remember these are the two conventions right. So, using the proper uh, pr property of the tensor products of this inner product, we can be separate into something like this. Again, we have separated using the tensor product. 
Now, applying the Born's rule to calculate the probability p phi, we can take into this, we just square it. And since the individual probabilities of measurement of this one is in uh, state, first one is in psi 1 and second one is in psi 2. So, from here, what we can take is this one. So, these are the two joint probabilities. So, the joint probability of v phi can be written as individual probabilities, this one and this one. So, what does it tell? It actually shows, inference can be drawn, that this one actually shows that for independent qubits, the probability of measuring them in specific states is simply the product of the individual probabilities. And, most importantly, the next and the last statement, this is a reflection in quantum mechanics. When two subsystems are independent, their combined behavior can be understood in terms of the probabilities of their individual states. So, when we are taking up the probability, their combined behavior only can be understood when we take the probabilities of the individual states. So, we got to this part that how we can take the, I would say, the probabilities, combine them and finally come to this conclusion that in order to understand that, we need to have the probabilities of the individual states. So, here is a quick summary. I mean to say, uh, yeah, this is a summary. I mean to say, this this is something we need to know. This notation refers to the joint state. You might get confused. And P phi represents the probability of the entire state. So don't get confused. P phi one and phi two. These are actually representing individual qubits. And this big phi again to tell you is basically the joint state of the system. Distinguish it from the probabilities that might pertain to individual components. So from here, what we have learned. Let us make a summary. The mathematics of quantum mechanics is not abstract, yes we have seen, it is very much practical. The state space of a composite system is the tensor product or the Kronecker product of individual Hilbert space. Uh, the basis uh, state of the composite system are represented as vectors in higher dimensional space. The probability of measuring quantum system is given by the square of the amplitude and if the subsystems are independent, then the joint probability is actually spe uh, specifies the outcome in each subsystem. And finally, in a composite system, entangled states cannot be factored into a simple product of individual states. So that's all for today's video. I would like to thank you immensely for taking up time and watching this video. If you have liked, please do subscribe and hit on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from Physics for Students. You can write to me on this email ID and you can subscribe to my other channel, General Theory of Relativity. You can follow me on my Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter account. Physics for Students will keep on producing more and more qualitative and good and funny videos and enjoying videos so that your learning on mathematics and physics is more entertaining and en enriching and knowledgeable. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will be soon back. But till then, goodbye.